Hello everyone. Before starting the lesson, try this warm up. Solve for x in each of these equations. Pause the video and see if you can answer the questions. x equals 3 for the first one, x equals 2 for the second one, and x equals 2 for the third one. Here's my thinking. I know that 3 squared is 9. I know that 2 to the exponent 3 is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. So, there you have it. Now, the thinking that we did in the warm-up will come into play later in the lesson. But this lesson is about rational exponents. We're going to simplify and evaluate expressions containing rational exponents. So what are rational exponents, you might be wondering? Well, the root of the word rational is ratio. These are exponents that are ratios. And ratios can be expressed as fractions. So what we're dealing with in this lesson is exponents that are fractions. So we're going to look at what to do with a rational exponent and how you can evaluate expressions with rational exponents. Now just watch what I'm doing here. Here I have 9 to the exponent 1 over 2. This is a rational exponent. If I were to square this power, this is now a power of a power. And I know my exponent laws. If I have a power of a power, I can simplify that by multiplying the exponents. So that's what I'm doing. When I do 1 over 2 times 2, it's 1. So this simplifies to 9 to the exponent 1, which is 9. Now in the warm-up, I looked at this equation, x squared equals 9. To solve that, to solve for x, I take the square root of 9, which is 3. So if something squared is equal to 9, then that means that thing was equal to 3. Well, here I'm squaring something, and the answer is 9. So that means this must also be equal to 3. So the square root of 9 is equal to 3. 9 to the exponent 1 over 2 is also equal to 3. So that means 9 to the exponent 1 over 2 is equal to the square root of 9. Keep this in the back of your mind as I show you another thing. 8 to the exponent 1 over 3 cubed. Simplify this power by multiplying the exponents. I get this. The answer is 8. In the warm-up, I had x cubed equals 8. I solved for x by taking the cubed root of 8, which was 2 as the answer, because 2 cubed is 8. So x is equal to the cubed root of 8. Now, something cubed is equal to 8. The answer is 2. This cubed is 8, so this must also equal 2. So 8 to the exponent 1 over 3 is equal to the cubed root of 8. And I can see that here. Notice this and this. Keep this idea in the back of your mind as I show you. One more thing, 16 to the 1 over 4 to the exponent 4 simplifies to this. I multiply the exponents. 16 to the exponent 1 is 16. And in the warm-up, we had x to the exponent 4 equals 16. To figure that out, we can think, what is the fourth root of 16? What multiplied by itself four times is 16? The answer was 2. Something to the exponent 4 is equal to 16, just like this to the exponent 4 was equal to 16. Well, that thing, the base of the power, is 2. So this must also equal 2. So 16 to the exponent 1 over 4 must be the same as the fourth root of 16. Notice this and this. So that leads me to this general rule for rational exponents. Any base with a rational exponent can be rewritten as a radical. n is a symbol for the what type of root you're taking, either square root, cube root, fourth root, fifth root, etc. The number here is the same as the number here, the denominator of the fraction in your exponent. 
So you can rewrite a rational exponent as a radical. A radical is just written as a type of root, a square root or a cubed root, etc. So using actual numbers here, if n was a 2, 1 over 2 as the exponent corresponds to a square root. You could put a 2 here. Generally, mathematicians don't put a 2 there. If you see this symbol, it means it's a square root or second root. x to the 1 over 3 would be the cubed root. There's a 3 there in the root symbol. And if you have x to the 1 over 4, you are taking the fourth root of your number. Now, you'll definitely have this button on your calculator, the square root. You might have the cubed root button on your calculator. You might not have a fourth root button on your calculator, but you might have this button on your calculator, which allows you to have any kind of root that you want. If you need help using that button on your calculator, uh, you can ask me how to use that and I'll help you. So I'd like you to use the rule that I just talked about. I want you to take each of these rational exponents and I want you to rewrite these expressions as a radical. That means writing it as a square root or a cubed root or a fourth root, etc. So write it as a radical and then evaluate. See if you can type that into your calculator and figure out what the answer is. Or you might be able to come up with the answer without a calculator. Either way is fine. But the point is I'd like you to pause the video and try this question. Well, here you are. 25 to the exponent 1 over 2 is the square root of 25, which is 5. 27 to the exponent 1 over 3 is the cubed root of 27. The answer is 3. 256 to the exponent 1 over 4 is the fourth root of 256. The answer is 4. Negative 100 to the exponent 1 over 2 is the same as negative square root of 100. So that means it's negative 10. This is different than what you see here. Notice the placement of the brackets and no brackets here. If you had brackets around the negative 100, you would be doing the square root of negative 100. And if you try that in your calculator, it won't work. It'll be a math error. Because there are no num there is no number that multiplied by itself squared is uh, getting you a negative answer. So if you had trouble with this question, it might have been because of that. This should be the way you do it. Now, I want to switch gears here. And here we have a power with a rational exponent, but this time the numerator is not 1. So I want to show you how you can think of this. 3 over 2 is the same as 1 over 2 times 3. Now, working backwards here, uh, my power of a power rule is multiply the exponents, so I can turn this into a power of a power. 16 to the exponent 1 over 2 to the exponent 3. Now, 16 to the 1 over 2 is the square root of 16. That is 4. So cube that, I get 64. So look at this. 16 to the exponent 3 over 2 is the same as 16 to the exponent 1 over 2 to the exponent 3. So I can rewrite my rational exponent as a radical with an exponent. The denominator of the fraction in my exponent tells me what kind of root I'm taking. In this case, it was a 2, which is a square root. The numerator of the exponent tells me what the exponent is on that radical. So if you have a rational exponent, you can rewrite it as a radical again. But if the numerator is other than 1, you can just put an exponent on your radical. This is a more formalized way of saying that. In general, a rational exponent of m over n can be rewritten as the radical, the nth root of x, to the exponent m. Notice, 
The denominator is the type of root. The numerator is the exponent on your radical. So, see if you can rewrite each of these expressions as a radical and then evaluate. Pause the video and try this on your own. Here I've rewritten each of these expressions as a radical. It, for the first one, it's the cubed root of 8 to the exponent 2. For the second one, it's the square root of 16 to the exponent 3. And now I can just use my calculator to figure out what the cubed root of 8 is, and then evaluate the expression. So 8 to the exponent 2 thirds is equal to 4. Now 16 to the exponent 3 over 2 was rewritten as this radical. The square root of 16 is 4. 4 cubed is 64. So 16 to the exponent 3 over 2 is equal to 64. Now what if your exponent is negative? Well, we've already talked about exponent laws and how to deal with a negative exponent. You can make the exponent positive, but instead of the base, use the reciprocal of the base. So the reciprocal of 16 is 1 over 16, and then the exponent becomes positive. So here we have 1 over 16 to the exponent 3 over 2. This is a rational exponent. The denominator is 2. That means we're taking the square root of 1 over 16. Square root of 1 over 16 is the same as the square root of 1, which is 1, over the square root of 16, which is 4. So the square root of 1 over 16 is 1 over 4. Now, uh, cube that. 1 to the exponent 3 is 1. 4 to the exponent 3 is 64. So I can use my negative exponent rule just like before and then deal with my rational exponent like I did in the previous examples in this lesson and then just start to evaluate and you end up with your final answer. So 16 to the exponent negative 3 over 2 is equal to 1 over 64. So I'd like you to rewrite each expression as a radical then evaluate. So you're going to do just what I showed you. In each case, you have a negative exponent. So rewrite it as a positive exponent, then write it as a radical, then evaluate. Pause the video and try this question. For the first one, I take the reciprocal of the base, which is 1 over 9, and raise it to a positive exponent, 3 over 2. Because the denominator of the exponent is 2, that's the square root. The square root of 1 over 9 is 1 over 3. Cube that. 1 to the exponent 3 is 1. 3 to the exponent 3 is 27. So my final answer is 1 over 27. For the next one, I have a negative exponent. So I take the reciprocal of the base, which is 16 over 25, and raise it to a positive exponent. The denominator of the exponent is 2, so I'm taking the square root. The square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 25 is 5. So I have 4 fifths to the exponent 1, which is 4 fifths. Now this example will require you to use the exponent laws that we talked about in the previous lesson, as well as the rational exponent stuff I've been talking about in this lesson. So I'd like you to simplify this expression using the exponent laws and then evaluate. So we've talked about multiplying powers with the same base, dividing powers with the same base, power of a power, zero exponents, negative exponents, and then also rational exponents in this lesson. Put all that together and simplify this expression. Pause the video and try it. First off, I'm going to take this square root of 8 and write it as a rational exponent. And now that all my powers have the same base with exponents, I can start using my exponent rules. 
I'm here I'm multiplying powers with the same base, so I will add the exponents. Now, I'm adding 5 sixths and 1 half. When you're adding fractions, you have to have a common denominator. So I'm going to rewrite 1 over 2 as 3 over 6, the equivalent fraction. So 5 sixths plus 1 over 2 is the same as 5 sixths plus 3 sixths. Now that is 8 sixths, but I'm going to reduce this to lowest terms, which is 4 thirds. So this looks like a lot, but here's what I did. I'm multiplying powers with the same base, so I added the exponents together. 5 sixths plus a half is 4 thirds in lowest terms. So I'll just rewrite it down here a little bit neater. 8 to the 4 thirds divided by 8 to the 5 thirds. So because I'm dividing powers with the same base, I'm going to subtract my exponents. 4 thirds minus 5 thirds. Now those already have a common denominator, so I can just put them together. 4 thirds minus 5 thirds is negative 1 third. So I've reduced this entire expression down to a single power, but I have a negative exponent. So I'm going to fix that up. Using my negative exponent rule, I can change the base to the reciprocal, and the exponent becomes positive. I have a rational exponent, so I'm going to simplify that. Because the denominator of the exponent was 3, I'm taking the cube root of 1 over 8. So the cube root of 1 is 1, and the cube root of 8 is 2, so my final answer is 1 over 2. Just to recap what we did, I took this expression here, and I used my exponent laws to simplify. If you're multiplying powers with the same base, add the exponents. That brought me to here. If you're dividing powers with the same base, subtract the exponents. That brought me to this. If you have a negative exponent, make it positive, but turn that base into the reciprocal. And now, evaluate. If you have a rational exponent, you can turn that into a radical, and then you can plug that into your calculator. And if this part is a fraction, just do the root separately for the numerator and denominator. So in this lesson, you learned how to evaluate expressions containing rational exponents. So if you uh, have any trouble with this, just reach out for help.